culture is just so important when it comes to customer experience. Our culture is the bedrock underpinning every CX strategy. Uh, and there's a ton of things that companies can do to successfully ingrain CX within the organization's DNA. Hello, and welcome to a whole new episode of Engadi Engage. I'm your host, Jeremy D'Souza. And today we have customer experience expert, Ben Moderim, on our show. But before we begin the interview, allow me to introduce you to the magic of Engadi. Engadi is the world's leading multilingual no-code chatbot platform available across 14 channels with 25,000 bots created across 186 countries in every domain and use case. Engadi has also been recognized as a top platform by Inc.com, TechWorld, CIO, and many others. We run the Engadi blog, video channel, and the Engadi Engage podcast, receiving upwards of 300,000 visitors annually. And now, for our amazing guest. Ben Motorum passionately believes that providing an exceptional customer experience is the only sustainable competitive advantage. Ben is a passionate evangelist for putting the customer at the heart of everything that a business does. He has over 20 years experience in developing and implementing customer acquisition and retention strategies in strategic sales, marketing, and customer experience roles. Determined, energetic, and continuously learning, Ben's success can be attributed to a dedication to understanding and consistently exceeding customer expectations. It's really amazing to have you with us, Ben. Thank you, Jeremy. It's great to be here. Amazing. So um, before we dive into this interview, we'll have a quick announcement for you. We have something special for the entire audience. So stick around to the end of the interview and you'll get it. You'll find out. Ben, let's dive in. Sure. Okay, so my first question to you is, how has technology changed the way customer experience strategies are being in- implemented nowadays? Okay, so I like to think of a strategy as a roadmap showing your ultimate goal and how you intend to get there. Yeah. So taking that analogy and, and applying this question to it, technology simply gives you more paths to get to your CX destination. Now, to, to illustrate that point, Um, Think about how we did business uh, 100 years ago. So back in those days, customer experience revolved predominantly around a shop front. Now, with the invention of the telephone came the ability to sell and service over the phone, and then with the internet um, came the addition of customer self-service. Now, social media adds another convenient customer support channel. So... Technology opens up more options for you in terms of how CX strategies are implemented, but at the same time, it also adds complexity. So CX managers need to be very clear about the type of experience that they want to give their customers and then make sure that their strategies are uh, driving their technology investments, um, not the other way around. Definitely. Okay. 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 Digital and social media have become important aspects uh, where brands can engage with their customers, right? So uh, what aspects uh, should people focus on to strengthen the customer experience with these channels? Okay, so I think one of the best ways to improve your customer experience is to reduce the amount of effort that it takes for customers to do business with you. Like make it easy for customers to do business with you. So digital is great for this because it allows customers to easily get quotes, compare products and and, and buy from you. Um, It also facilitates reviews so customers can reference one another uh, prior to making a purchase. And web chat is uh, um, a great way for customers to get support because they can do it in the background of whatever they're doing whilst they're on their laptops. Um, Social media also facilitates customer referencing and has the added benefit of making it really convenient for customers uh, from a support perspective. It's a lot easier to tweet a brand a message uh, rather than have to hunt for their phone number, uh, then place a call, navigate your way through an IVR, um, and then wait in a queue before you speak to somebody. Yeah. They're the pros of digital and social media from a customer engagement point of view. The, the cons come in the form of the potential damage to a brand should something negative go viral. 
uh, should something negative go viral. Um, a mistyped word, a misconstrued message, or even um, a rogue customer service agent can lead to screenshots of conversations between customers and organisations being shared thousands of times. Uh, and in the past, we've seen millions of dollars wiped off company values because of that. So brands, um, uh, brands have to be careful because, um, you know, brands that have been carefully built for years can be wiped out virtually overnight by negative viral campaigns. Definitely. So I think it makes it easier for the customers to reach all the brands and it also involves a bit of transparency out there, right? Yeah, well, it, it helps brands to become transparent. You can you can um, provide a lot more information about the, the how you speak, how you interact with customers, the brand voice, um, the brand values uh, in the way that you interact. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, so during the current crisis, I think every, everything's going online, everything's going on social media. Uh, what do you think will be the new or uh, novel outbound of the current crisis for customer service and support? Yeah, uh, good, good question. Um, look, I think as a result of the pandemic, companies have become more empathetic. Um, they're dealing with customers who are sick, have lost loved ones, or been drastically financially impacted. So um, the way that they used to deal with customers, and, and often going by a hard and fast rule book, um, just won't cut it right now. So at the moment, customers need more latitude from, from organisations. And to their credit, I think a lot of companies are stepping up and giving it to them. You know, we're seeing health companies holding off premium increases, uh, gyms suspending memberships free of charge, uh, car insurance companies offering discounts on premiums because people aren't driving as much, uh, and airlines giving extensions on frequent flyer statuses because um, people can't get flight credits because they're, um, they're not allowed to fly. Um, once the pandemic is over, I think we're going to see a couple of things. So um, some companies are going to ramp up their sales efforts really quickly to get cash in the door. It's, it's very much a short-term play, um, but for many companies it's unavoidable. That, by, that, by that time, sales uh, will have been depressed for many months and they need uh, the income to survive. The longer-term play is companies anticipating customer needs that will have changed as a result of the pandemic and adapting to meet them. Um, that's going to differ for every company, but it's the ones that are putting the planning in now whilst we're in the middle of this crisis um, that are going to come out on the other side with a great opportunity to take market share from their competitors by doing exactly so this. Empathy and foresight have a really huge role out here, right? Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Okay, uh, so a great employee experience obviously drives, you know, a better customer experience. What do you believe organizations should be doing to ensure that the customer experience is part of the, you know, the DNA of the organizational culture? Yeah. All right. So, so culture is just so important when it comes to customer experience. Yeah, culture is the bedrock underpinning every CX strategy. Uh, and there's a ton of things that companies can do to successfully ingrain CX within the organization's DNA. The first thing they need to do is define why the company exists. And this isn't to create shareholder value or put or pay everyone's wages. That's a consequence. What customer issues does the company solve? What needs does it meet? How does the company make the world a better place? These are, these are come down to the these are all things that come down to the company's why, uh, and uh, that why needs to then be articulated in the mission and vision statements of the company, and also reinforced in the company's values. Um, clear whys um, become extremely engaging for employees and, and customers alike. They make people want to work for you and they make people want to buy from you. So then define the experiences that you want to give customers in a CX strategy and the metrics you're going to use to monitor your progress towards this goal. And then it's about your people. Ensure that all staff have at least one CX-related KPI to help ensure that everyone's swimming in the same direction. And when you're bringing new staff in, include uh, an aptitude for customer service amongst the things that you look for in new starters for every position because uh, every position has customers, be they internal or external. Then include a CX component in your induction training explaining what the company's goals are, uh, how a great experience helps the company reach those goals and give an overview of the company's CX strategy. And then as part of your operating rhythm, 
collect and listen to employee and customer feedback. And most importantly, take action as a result of it. If you're not going to take action, what's the point of collecting it in the first place? And share feedback widely within the company. Everybody wants to hear feedback uh, on their performance, right? Um, and finally, uh, create customer journey maps to better understand the experience you're providing customers and update them continually. And also make sure that you share them widely internally so everyone understands how the role that they play within the organization affects the end customer experience. Definitely. Okay, so uh, you spoke about finding the company's why over there. Yep. So what other questions do you think companies should be asking themselves while trying to improve their CX? Well, there's a number of questions um, that uh, that they should be asking. So um, um, I think the first question they need to ask themselves is what experience do we want to give customers? If you don't define this, you're going to be leaving it to chance and that leads to inconsistencies which frustrate the hell out of customers. Um, then I'd be asking, okay, so what does success look like? So how will we know when we've reached our CX goals? Um, and this involves defining the metrics that you're going to be using to measure your progress along the way. And those metrics should be both operational and relationship-based. So by relationship-based, I mean, you know, your metrics like net promoter score, customer effort score, CSAT, things like that. Um, then it's about understanding customers. So ask yourself, what do we know about our customers? Uh, and that's in terms of their needs, habits, motivations, uh, and expectations, which then leads into how do we keep up to date with these expectations and ensure that we're meeting and exceeding them? Uh, and the last question uh, I'd be asking myself is, what are we actually doing to improve CX today? It's, it's very easy to fall into the trap of waiting for something to happen before actually doing something to improve the, to improve the experience for customers. Um, whether that's waiting for next month's survey results to come in or a system upgrade or maybe a mail out going out to customers. Uh, each day you wait is another day that customers could be having an improved experience with you. So um, stay focused on your CX program by asking yourself on a daily basis, what are we doing to improve our organization's customer experience today? Wonderful. Are there any other thoughts that you'd like to share with our audience here? Look, um, look, that's about it, Jeremy. Um, just perhaps that my company, C Expert, helps organisations become more human-centric in the way that they deal with customers and employees. Um, I've worked with some of Australia's best-known brands on many of the things I've spoken about today, including developing and implementing CX strategies, um, creating customer and employee insight programs, and developing journey maps. Um, if you'd like to get in touch with me to discuss how I could help you, please reach out through my website, www.cexpert.com.au, or perhaps um, just spend some time there going through the blog posts on all things related to customer and employee experience. Definitely. And also, since you're such a valuable research, I think the entire audience, the entire audience should definitely connect with you on LinkedIn and Twitter. They're going Absolutely. to get a lot of value out of that. Yeah, no, um, I, um, I'm constantly putting up posts on LinkedIn. So, um, yeah, if, if you could please include my, uh, my link in the bio, that would be awesome. Will most certainly be done. Okay, so that's been a brilliant interview, Ben. We've got a lot of value out of that. Great. And uh, now, since the entire audience has stuck around, here's a quick announcement for the rest of you. We're also organizing a panel discussion on CX for the future, and we're taking your questions. So head over to www.ingadi.com slash webinar and register over there. We'll take your questions and get them answered by our panelists. Ingadi Engage will definitely be back really soon with a new expert and a new episode. Until then, subscribe and go follow Ben too. Thank you.